Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. I post budgeting related videos one to two times every week so if that's content that you're interested in I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are notified for when I post new videos. Um, and today I'm going to be doing my September budget setup which I can't believe it's already September. Well I mean I guess technically it's still August but it's almost September so I'm setting up for that and this month I do have a quite a few changes for my budget that I'm actually really excited for. The first thing I always list out um, is my income. So I am a salaried employee and I am paid the same amount every Friday. So in September, um, there's four Fridays, so I am paid four times. However, this month is actually going to be a little bit different. Um, and that was because this past Monday, my boss actually called me into his office and said that I was getting a raise. Um, and I am so grateful and so excited. Um, yeah, I just, I honestly, like, I'm just super, super happy that I'm getting this raise. It'll just help me really, like, pay off my debt faster and... Yeah, I'm just I'm ecstatic there's a few things about that though <laughs> because ultimately like before this like when I was doing July and August my estimated income was my income like I'm always paid the same amount every Friday whereas now I don't know what my income will actually be um, and there's a few reasons for that so for one the first paycheck that I receive in September will be coming on September the 3rd um, and then my raise is actually effective as of September the 1st so that means the week before which is like September or sorry August 27th through September the 2nd and then I'm paid on September the 3rd the majority of that first paycheck will be at my old rate um, only September 1st and September 2nd will be at my increased like raise rate. So the first paycheck is going to be quite a bit less than the other three paychecks of the month. Also, I don't know what my actual paycheck each week is going to be now. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. Like I can go online to like do a calculator to see like roughly what my take home pay will be. But my work also takes off money for um, I think long term or short term disability insurance. They also take money off for like our extended health care plan. Um, so I am located in Canada. So like health insurance is not like super expensive or anything, but we do have a plan at my work to cover things that aren't covered by the government. So like that's like dental care and like prescriptions and things. And then also my work does take off a percentage of my income for um, retirement. So it goes into an RRSP and then the company matches that. So there's a lot of factors that are involved in getting my actual like take home pay. So I'm going to estimate it as best I can. But ultimately, like I really won't know until I start receiving those paychecks as to like what I will actually be taking home. So my estimated income and granted, this is only for four paychecks, not for five, um, is going to be for three thousand and eighty dollars. And yeah, I'm super, super excited about that. Like I wasn't expecting this raise. So anything is just like anything more than what I was expecting is just like ultimately like so amazing. And like just to note, like back when I did my August budget, I had four paychecks in August as well. And my August income was $2,840. So I'm expecting like probably an extra 200 ish dollars a month. Um, when I have four paychecks in a month. So yeah, anything more than that is just amazing. I'm going to be able to put more money towards my debts and like sinking funds and everything. So ultimately, I'm really, really excited about that. So anyways, yeah, my salary is very much an estimated amount this month. I highly think I like there's no way I got that number right. It's definitely going to change when I check in. But yeah, I'm super excited with that raise. So anyways, the next thing I always list out um, in my income is an other category. Um, and I don't have any other sources of income, so I always do just use this as zero unless for some reason I know I'm getting some sort of extra income. Um, but yeah, other is always zero, but just in case <laughs> um, I ever have anything. So, oh, I don't need my calculator for that. The total for that <laughs> is very easy. That's $3,080. 
So now I list out my fixed expenses um, and I list out my fixed expenses a little bit differently than quite a few other people. Um, my fixed expenses, I don't consider expenses that are the only things that just like don't change every month. I list out my fixed expenses for things that I have to pay and I don't have any control over. So my first fixed expense is my rent. And I mean, that is very fixed. That doesn't change on a monthly basis unless like on a yearly basis when my rent increases, but my estimate or my actual rent is $1,200 a month. The next fixed expense I have is hydro. And this is where a lot of people would categorize this as a variable expense, but I do consider it fixed because I have to pay my hydro bill. So I'm going to put my estimated amount for hydro at $70. Um, I do think that that's probably going to be a bit less that this month, but ultimately like $70 has been working for me as like an estimate and then whatever extra I can save, that's great. But yeah, I don't want to under budget. Um, the next thing I have is my internet bill. And my internet is $60 a month. And then I also have my tenant's insurance. And that is $25. And that's actually it for my household expenses because both my gas and my water are included in my rent. The next thing I have is my car insurance. And that is $120 a month. Um, and you'll notice I don't have a car payment. Um, that's because when my car stopped working, I was able to get my dad's old car because he was actually upgrading his car. I do need to pay him back for that and I owe him that money. However, um, it's not like a dedicated car payment. So I am targeting my credit cards first. And then once I'm out of credit card debt, then I'll start being able to pay back my dad for my car. Um, so the next thing I have is my phone bill. And that is $75 a month. Next thing I have is Netflix. And um, Netflix actually, this was bad. So in July, they actually started charging tax for Netflix. So, and I didn't actually know that because I wasn't paying attention to the bill. Um, so actually in July and in August, my Netflix was actually slightly higher. So just with taxes, I'm gonna round because I always round to the nearest dollar. So Netflix, I'm actually putting in as $12. Next thing I have is Spotify. And Spotify is 10. And then I also have an iCloud subscription, which is $2. And then finally, I have my credit card minimum payments. And these were my credit card minimums as of July the 1st. So even if I'm not able to make dedicated extra payments for the month, um, by paying this like inflated minimum, I'll be able to make more progress on my debt than from before I started my debt-free journey. So these credit card minimums, like the actual credit card minimum is lower than this now, but I am keeping it at this amount um, always. And then just whatever money I have left over, I put towards my debt as extra. But the minimum here is $400. So let's grab my calculator and grab the totals. So I have $1,200 plus 70 plus 60 plus 25 plus 120, plus 75, plus 12, plus 10, plus two, plus 400. So that gives me a total of $1,974 for my fixed expenses. So the next category I have is my variable expenses. And these are the categories that I um, check in for every week and really these are the categories that I've been able to really like cut back in and make the most progress in um, just towards like saving for my debts. So the first category that I have is groceries and um, I have like I haven't filmed my final weekly spending check-in for August but I have gone over in groceries for August and I think the reason that was was because in July I but gave myself $40 per paycheck and I was paid five times in July so I got $200 for my groceries but then in August I was only paid four times so I only got four times $40 a week which is $160 and that just wasn't enough um I 
have really been trying to cut back but ultimately like I'm not having a whole ton of food waste and I do find that like I'm using all of that money and I was going over so I've decided to up my grocery budget and ultimately this might have to change again it depends on how I do in September but the biggest thing here is that like I am very new to budgeting. I never tracked this stuff before. So I thought that doing $40 a week was fine because I knew that I was spending probably around that before um, I started budgeting or maybe a bit more, maybe close to $50 a week. But I was also throwing out a lot of food beforehand. So that's why I thought I could cut it back to 40. But something that I guess I didn't really like think about when I was doing this was that I used to eat out a lot more than I do now. So there was a lot of meals where I would plan to eat at home, but then I would ultimately end up eating out. So I'm not eating out as much anymore though. I really have cut back quite a bit on my eating out. So that kind of makes sense that it's like, I'm not eating out as much, but then my grocery budget is really low. So I just really haven't had enough money. So for September, I'm gonna up it by $5 a week and we'll see how I do. And ultimately I might have to readjust that in October, but we'll see. So $45 a week and then times four paychecks is $180 for groceries. The next category I have is dining out. And I've actually been doing pretty well with dining out um, and I've been giving myself $10 a week. Um, I haven't really been going out to eat at like restaurants or anything. I've just been using that to get like little things here and there, but it's been working. So I'll continue that again for September. So dining out four times 10 is 40. Then next I have gas. In gas, I've been doing a set amount each month um, as $150. And I think think I'll probably be able to stick to that in August but ultimately like we'll see if gas is more expensive or I have to end up driving more places and obviously like I have to spend more money in gas I have to put it in my car in order to drive but I'll try to keep it to around 150 again and then finally my last category is miscellaneous and I've been giving myself $50 every week, sorry, not week, every month. And that's actually been working. Um, I really have cut back on my miscellaneous spending. So I've been really proud of myself over the last couple months for that category alone. So I'm gonna leave that of $50. And then the other last thing I put in my variable expenses are my sinking funds. And I have been doing $150 a month. But I know that if I want to meet some of my savings goals, especially for Christmas, I'm going to have to up that. And because I did make a little bit of extra money now because I got this raise, I am going to up my sinking funds a bit. So I'm going to do $200 for my sinking funds in September, which is great. And ultimately like that extra money is just going to go to Christmas. So yeah, let's add this all up. So I've got groceries, which is 180 plus 40 for dining out, 150 for gas, 50 for miscellaneous, and 200 for my sinking funds. So that's a total of $620. So now down at the bottom, I sort of just take down all of my numbers and see what's left over. And which, whatever's left over, I can put towards my um, emergency fund at the beginning. And then once my emergency fund was done, then it starts going towards my debt. So the first thing I have is my income. So my estimated income for the month is $3,080. Next, I have my fixed expenses. And my estimated fixed expenses for the month are $1,974. And then finally, I have my variable expenses. And the total there was $620. So let's grab my calculator again. So if I take 3,080 minus 1974 minus 620, I am left with $486 that I can use to put towards my debts most likely. Like again, I am filming this video in August, sorry, in August, yes. <laughs> um, so I haven't actually closed out my August budget yet. So I don't know exactly how much um, I'm going to be able to put towards like my emergency fund and my debt because if in case anybody 
isn't aware, um, I started budgeting in July and in July I was able to put $965 towards my emergency fund. A lot of that was coming from the fact that I had a five paycheck month in July. So I still needed an extra $35 um, in my emergency fund for it to be funded with $1,000. So once I did, that was my plan for August and then extra money that's left over would be able to go towards an extra debt payment. I don't know the exact amount I'm gonna be able to put towards that like leftover extra amounts for August yet because I haven't closed out my August budget, but I highly, highly doubt um, I'll have to put any more money towards my emergency fund in September. Like I fully think that there's no way I'm gonna be overspending by that much in August in the last few days of the month unless something like drastic happens. So I know, I'm pretty confident anyways that my emergency fund will be fully funded in August and I'll actually be able to put some more some extra money towards my debts in August as well. So September, that means that hypothetically I could put almost $500 extra towards my debts, which would be amazing. And that would be like the most extra I've already put towards it. And then on top of the fact that like this $400, um, aren't my actual minimum payments. My minimum payments are less than that. It's just like, it's really, really cool. So I'll be able to hopefully put almost a thousand dollars towards my debts in, um, September. I guess not a thousand. It'll be closer to 900, but almost $900 towards my debts in September, which will be amazing. And then anything extra would just be great. And I'm like, just super, super excited for that. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's it for today. That's everything for my September budget. If you have any comments or questions, please do so down below. I'd love to hear from you. And just please remember if this is content that you're interested in. I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I post new videos one to two times every week. So my next video will actually be on Monday and I'll be actually be going over my September calendar just to go over everything and like where my bills fall and how I'm paying for everything. So yeah, that's going to be video will be live on Monday. So I hope you all have an amazing weekend and I will talk to you on Monday. Bye everyone.